Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Three times for the Holy Spirit. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. If you are glad to be in the house of the Lord, come on and stand up on your feet. I don't care if you're on campus or online. Give God a hand of praise. Why? Because he alone is worthy. He declares, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Keep clapping and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. Come on and give him praise. Come on. We welcome you into this time of worship. We're not here for ourselves. We're here for him. Everybody point to heaven. We're here for him to give him glory, praise, and honor. So let everything that you do be an offering to him. When you sing, offering to him. When you clap your hands, an offering to him. We're getting ready to worship. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pause now, Lord God, to be refocused. Father, we've made our way in here putting on makeup, making sure our outfit was right, making sure it fits just right. But now, Father God, may our attention shift from us to you. May we turn all of our desires towards you and pleasing you. And Father, I pray in faith that the worship that goes forth, both in music and in preaching, would be a sweet savor to your nostrils. Father, we want to please you because this is your hour. We love you. We glorify you. In the name of Jesus, let everybody say amen. Come on and bless him one more time. Come on and bless him one more time. Did anybody come to have a good time in the Lord on today? Y'all, I was thinking about a long time ago when we used to be in church, and sometimes with, the, with, with Annie Hogan and the Hums, y'all, we be in church all night. All night. You be like, but it's something about what she used to do, she used to get the microphone and she, all she used to say was, Jesus. And the place just used to, it used to be pandemonium. And my plan, and my plan, it used to be pandemonium because we know at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. And how many of you know your situation will change when you start calling on the name of Jesus? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going, I'm just going to say it one time and I just want to wanna see how you're going to respond. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Somebody's situation just changed. Let me say it again. Jesus. Yeah. Somebody, somebody just received a healing on time. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus in the morning. The more I call him, the better I feel. I dare about 15 people in here to just call on the name Jesus. Let's celebrate the King. Let's celebrate the King. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. Come on. Celebrate our King. Let me hear you. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift His name on high. Come on, come on, Zion. We praise our King. Put those hands together. Come on, celebrate. Come on, celebrate. Our He's the ruler King. of everything. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift His name on high. Let's lift Him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. i 
our King. Hey, he's worthy of all worthy of all He's the Lord God in ancient days. He's the Lord God in ancient days. Let's lift his name on high. Let's lift him up Come on, on down. Down. We praise our King. Oh. Let them all come on Zion. We praise our King. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He is a great God. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a Make great some noise God. Right here. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He is a great God. Righteous. is so good to us and it's because of him that we're able to claim our freedom in here on today and not only that because he's great and he's within you you can choose to be free I said you can choose to be free those things are that, that want to hold you down you can speak your way out of those things you can say, God, because I know that you are in me and greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. So, God, I know that with you I can be free. 
So anybody in here that can make the decision right now, that can say, God, I choose to be free in here. Give God a free praise. Give him a free praise. I said a free praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands all over the building? When you lift your hands, it's, a, it's, it's an example of how we can humbly, humbly surrender unto God and say, God, I'm going to choose to be free. Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free. No chains are holding me. Say I'm free. I'm free indeed. in Christ. Come in on, Christ. I'm free. No chains are holding. No chains are holding. Who I? It's who I choose to be. Oh, I'm free in Christ. I'm free. No chains are holding. No chains are holding. It's who I choose to be. It's who I choose Come on, to say. Be. And I choose to be free. Come on and lift your hands all over the building.
Hallelujah. Remain standing at home and on campus. Psalm 150 sets the atmosphere that Brother Marquise and the praise team ushered us into. Listen to Psalm 150. Hallelujah. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his powerful acts. Praise him for his abundant greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings, instruments, and flutes. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Here it is. Let everything that has breath, everything that breathes, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I need for you to know something. If you're standing looking at me right now, whether on campus or online, you've got breath, so you ought to be praising the Lord right now. I know everything ain't right. Everything may not be good, but your circumstances do not dictate your praise. Come on. Let's set the atmosphere. Let's let the Lord know that he alone is worthy. Come on, let's pray. Father, we... We pause in the middle of this praise to say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for this moment that we share together. Your people in your place, invoking your presence. Father, we are so grateful for all that we have experienced thus far in the service. Lord, you woke us up this morning clothed in our right minds. Then we put on the clothes that you blessed us with. Then we came here in the transportation you provided for us. And Father, now we stand in the sanctuary giving you praise. We may not have a lyre or a heart, but we've got hands to clap. We've got a tongue to speak. We've got feet to dance. We've got arms to wave wave and father we give it all to you as an offering father we lift up the preacher for the hour pastor harold pierce jr we ask in faith that you would pour into him uh, anointing vision and power and permit him to take us to where he's been privately in his prayer ground father we need a blessed word from you on today and we know that you have the blessed man in this place. So, Father, we give you praise for him now. Now, Father, as the service continues, may we maintain the joy that's in here now. May we not get lackluster with our response, but may we give it back to you as an offering. Father, we love you today. We glorify you today. And it is in the name of Jesus the Christ that we pray and praise you. Let all who agree say amen. Now, give God another hand of praise. Come on. Like it's your last time. Woo! Now, before you take your seats, I want you to grab somebody by the hand. They, they wash their hands. Grab somebody by the hand. Let them know you love them. Give them a hug. Give them a kiss as long as you keep it holy. Come on and greet somebody in this place. Come on, come on. Come on. Don't just look at them. Turn to them. Turn to them. Say, what's up? Say, what's up? There you go. Let them know what's up. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Man, y'all looking good. Woo! Oh, yeah. Bless his name, bless his name, bless his name, come on. All right, y'all took me literally, all right, come on back, sit down now, amen. Come on, <laughs> boy, y'all, y'all know how to do it. Man, what a, what a joy it is to be back home, y'all. Oh, it's so good to be home, y'all, it's good to be home. Yeah, 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 look in here, oh man. I ain't the only one sweating. I see you, Brother Love. Come on. Well, I wish to again greet you with the joy of Jesus on today. Uh, I learned a valuable lesson from my friend and big brother, Dr. Vincent T. Parker. He said, Brown, if you're going to take a vacation, you got to give yourself an extra Sunday. If you take your vacation and you preach on the Sunday you come back, that eats into your vacation. So you got to give yourself an extra Sunday. 
and I want to publicly thank God that we have a team of preachers that will allow Pastor Brown to have that extra Sunday. Amen. Amen. And so on today, we are tremendously blessed to hear from the newest doctoral student. Come on, y'all. Give God some praise. He sent me a text. He said, hey, man, I'm getting ready to start my doctoral classes. I said, you go head on, bro. You go head on. Now, privately, this is privately, y'all. I guess it's public now. Uh, a few of us call him Harold the Scholar. Harold the Scholar, because he tries to pretend like he don't know what's happening in class. And then when he gets his transcript, it's straight A's. I start praying for his little old quizzes and exams. I ain't praying for nothing else. Man, y'all pray for me. I, I got to test and I just don't know. And he get a test. How, how, how'd the test go? Oh, I got an A plus. Man, I ain't praying for you no more. I got folk that really need prayer. But he is gifted. He is brilliant. And we know his brilliance based upon the wife he chose. And Sister Sean Pierce. Come on, give God hand for his wife. These kids. I can't call y'all kids no more, man. Y'all, they grown kind of. Uh, young bird has gone to freshman orientation. Is that right? Town view. Bam. Come on, give it up, give it up. And just so you know, you got to always know folks have, you know, people in the congregation, just in case people act crazy. Just everybody look that yellow hat over there, that yellow hat. Don't, don't make the mistake up in here and say nothing crazy. You may get a boot or a shoe thrown at you. I just hope she don't go in that purse. Amen. All right. A um, few things, a few things. First of all, I want to thank you all for your prayers. It has been, everybody just say, wow. wow. That's just, that's, that's the best way I can assess it. Uh, but I want you to know how faithful the Lord is. It has been a very difficult season, and, and we, we are rejoicing uh, with the sovereignty of our God. That's a big word that means God knows what's happening. He knows what he's doing, and we can trust him. Everybody say sovereign. That's what that big word means. And so we look over to our right. And on those silver Korg keyboards would be a young man, a little light-skinned fella. Uh, he's about my height. I think I'm taller. And uh, he would be orchestrating the whole thing from the musicians up to the booth, even back to the cameras. And uh, we celebrated his life on yesterday, Brother Dan Daniel Lee Stephen Jones. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up. And I've, I've, I'm learning the way you grieve is you talk through it. Uh, I had the privilege, I, I share this many times, I met this young man, he was 15, 16 years old, and he became the musician when I was a youth pastor. And y'all, it was for a short stint, but we had so much fun. And we made uh, just a bond that, uh, that short people make together, amen. When you see eye to eye, this is something that happens. Uh, and so uh, we reconnected, uh, again, we, we never lost touch, but we reconnected uh, intimately as far as friendship uh, about five or six years ago. And uh, the Lord allowed him to come and to serve with us really the last four or five years prior to COVID. And y'all, it was a work of art to watch all of the gifted musicians that he has brought to us. These guys wouldn't be here were it not for Brother Daniel. Amen. And uh, uh, he brought our sound guy who got the sound system. I mean, he did it all. And uh, he did that in between tours. And uh, just gifted, just extraordinary. Continue to pray for his wife, his two sons. Uh, this, that, that we just can't, we can't comprehend what that pain is like. Uh, and then, y'all, uh, what, what can I say about beautiful Thea? Yeah. Beautiful Thea. Um, that one broke me down. Beautiful Thea. Um, Nicole and I had the privilege of spending a few moments with her uh, the night before she passed. And uh, we, we prayed and we laughed and we shared. And um, to let me know that she was comprehending who I was and what I was doing, as I got ready to leave, she gave me a nod like that. Y'all, I went in that hallway and I wept like a, like a baby. But it was, it was tears of joy to know that we were able to share that moment. Give God some praise for Miss Thea. Uh, once again, we say wow. Come on, say wow. 
That's how you get through it. You just press through it, and we're lifting up her family. She has a huge family, uh, not just children and siblings, but just a huge family and following. So they're making preparations. We're landing upon August the 19th. So pray that that comes to pass, and we're trying to make that happen. There are a lot of logistical things to consider. Uh, don't worry, Pastor, Priest, Pastor Pierce, don't preach too long. I'm, I'm going to take a little time. Amen. A um, couple of things here I want to add to that. Thank you all for praying for my mission's effort to Haiti. Uh, and I know uh, I got all kind of messages. It's like two days after I got back, a uh, uh, um, woman was, was kidnapped. Now, let's be clear. Let's be clear. That took place in Port-au-Prince. You do not go to Port-au-Prince, Haiti. That region has been overtaken by gangs, and they're not, it's a stronghold. It is, it is a literal and a spiritual stronghold. They, they've literally held Haiti captive. And so I was in an area called Capetian, which is over eight hours away. And although the Lord blessed, I had a security detail and all that goes along with that. I stayed in a hotel. Uh, there's no power, but I had their generators. A uh, pastor was safe the whole time. The only time I had any challenge was at the airport. And uh, the guy was he, was, he was testing my resolve and my patience. And so uh, I've learned to mature in my old age because I needed him more than he needed me. Amen. So whatever he said, I sweated and I did it. But that was the only challenge, the only hiccup. But I want to thank you all for your investment. Now, ushers, are y'all ready? Uh, just give every, every household one. I got a thank you card made, and I, I wanted to just tangibilize my appreciation for you. Uh, you, you say, Pastor Mom, we didn't give anything. I don't care if you gave. You prayed. Uh, but I want every household to get a thank you card and uh, just a note of thanks for all that you've done. If you gave digitally, please do me the honor of sending me a text message so that I can send you a digital uh, thank you card as well. But church, I have, I'm learning again. Uh, that people don't have to be nice, kind, or generous. And you all made up the difference. Uh, I was able to go. I was able to, again, get a hotel. The organization couldn't pay for a hotel. I was able to get a hotel. I was able to be in an area that, that had air conditioning at least until 1 in the morning. Praise God for that. We'll take it. We'll take it. Amen. And uh, I didn't eat much. I didn't eat much in Haiti. Uh, that's, that was by choice. Amen. I have some challenges there, but the young man who invited me, I'm trying to get him to come here uh, so that he can greet you again. Y'all, we're not leaving this alone. Uh, the Haitians, the only difference between Haitians and Americans is this. When the slave ship stopped in Haiti, which was the last stop before it got to America, the Haitian people that were there stayed, and the rest of us came on to the Americas. That's the only difference. When you speak with them, when you look at them, they look exactly like us. They don't even look like Africans from Africa. They look like, I, that's why the brother didn't want to let me leave. He said, now, you sure you're American? I said, yes. He said, you were not born in Haiti? No. So you're not Haitian American? No. You don't have family, Haiti? No. So you're sure you were not born here? And that's why I almost lost it. And the Spirit said, you better say no and keep. No. So he gave me my passport back, and he allowed me to board. And thanks be to God, we made it back. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Come on. That incident happened. Uh, that was a 45-minute blackout at the airport. At the airport, the power goes out like once an hour. Just, just pray for them. Pray for them. Okay, a few more things. Uh, I'll, I'll bring some of these at the end. Make sure you get a thank you card. Y'all, we have a snow cone truck today. We got a snow cone truck. Uh, get you some free snow cones. Give them a tip or whatever. I think they're free. They're th yeah, they're free. I think, yeah, we paid for those. I think they're free. Um, yeah, and we're going to bless you all uh, with some snow cones. Uh, Y'all, we have five months left in 2023. And uh, we've hit, we've hit, we've hit, we've hit, we've hit a little, little hiccup, but the Lord is faithful. And I want to thank those of you who have been encouraging each other during this season. Many of you at the celebration on yesterday, praise God. Some of you came to the celebration on Friday, praise God for your presence. I've gotten your texts, I've gotten your calls, and they've kept me going, and I love you sincerely. And uh, y'all, 
by, by the grace of God, we're going to get through this together. Let me tell you what I'm talking about next Sunday. Next Sunday, I hope this ain't Pastor Pierce's text. But, but next Sunday, we're going to talk about dancing in the rain. Dancing in the rain. Uh, James teaches us a clear principle. He says, you got you to gotta rejoice when you go through difficulty. And oftentimes, we want to wait for the rain to stop to have a good time. Y'all, you can't wait. You can't wait for the rain to stop. We got to learn to dance in the rain. Somebody say amen. amen. Give God some praise one more time. We got to put this preacher up. I don't, I'm about to sing something. Hallelujah. Come on, praise with me. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, sing with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody know this. Holly, holly, holly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your holy hands. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Are there any thankful folk in the house? Come on. Thank you, G. Everything ain't great, but we give thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm waiting on you to get your praise on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I'm feeling it right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give God a hand for Pastor Pierce. Come on, come on. Go ahead and stand on your feet real quick. We thank God for his faithfulness and his presence here today in spite of what life has given you, the cards that you've been dealt. Uh, God's character remains the same. Uh, he's good when life is great and he's even better when life is filled with frustrations. Father, thank you today. God, thank you for this opportunity to stand. We thank you, God, for who you are, Lord, and just how you keep us in spite of ourselves. And Lord, as we move forward in worship, we pray that your word is taught with clarity and it falls on good ground. And Lord, that somebody leaves here better than the way they came in. We just want to thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll be reading from the, from the Christian Standard Bible, uh, Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, and I'll be reading verses, I believe, 11 through 14. Christian Standard Bible, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your well-being, not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. You will call to me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you. This is the Lord's declaration. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and places where I banished you. This is the Lord's declaration. I will restore you to the place from which I deported you. Uh, just for a moment, I want to talk about God's plan in questionable seasons. God's, God's plan in questionable seasons. You may be seated. God's plan in questionable 
seasons. Uh, humanity's natural response to adversity is to ask questions. Questions like, why me, God? What, what did I do to deserve so much pain? H how will I get through this season? Those are the types of questions that we ask when we're faced with adversity. Additionally, the pace, how fast we go, and the way we move during times of difficulty reflect what we believe about the questions we ask God during difficult seasons. For example, you've asked God, how will you make it through the difficult season? And if you believe he'll make a way, you'll wait on him. But if you believe he's taking too long, you move at a rapid pace trying to fix it yourself. Only to discover you cannot do it alone. You found yourself in a questionable season and you're unsure if the plan is still in play. My friends, if you live long enough, you'll find yourself in questionable seasons. Uh, one day the sun is shining, flowers are blooming, and all appears well. Next thing you know, it's storming. The sun that once shined in your life is now overwhelmed by clouds. The stillness that once soothed your soul has been replaced by turbulence, and for whatever reason, you no longer want to smile because now you have questions. Have you ever been there? Transition within an organization takes place or you no longer feel welcome in your home. Things are going well, then something tragic happens and you found yourself with tons of questions. Or how about when you served well and able to do many things, but now you're sick without any cause? That's a questionable season. God, you said your grace is sufficient, and I believe you, but I've labored at this job for many years, and they laid me off. That, that's a questionable season. But what, what about when disobedience brings about questions? Uh, God, I know I sinned, but you said you'd forgive me. Why, why am I still dealing with the effects of my actions? That's a questionable season. Listen, during the summer... Life may seem hot and bothersome. In the fall, things may seem to slow down and transition is upon the horizon. In winter, life may seem cold and lonesome. And in the spring, things may seem brand new. But one thing's for sure, in the ups and downs of life, sometimes you'll find yourself in questionable seasons. But one thing's for certain, even in questionable seasons, you can celebrate because you can trust God's plan. Uh, situations arise and circumstances change, but God doesn't. And his plan is ultimately to restore you. God's people in Jeremiah found themselves in the midst of a questionable season. The Bible says that they were led to trust a lie from a prophet named Hananiah. They found themselves in the middle of pagan pressures. They were influenced by culture, turned to idols, pagan practices, ignored God, and ultimately were disobedient. If you know anything about the history of God's people, we are known for repeated offenses. And, and God often has to allow us to suffer the consequences, which often leads us to questionable seasons. Uh, Jeremiah 2 and 13 says this, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Uh, in, in summary, they left God and partnered with instability. Uh, they, they, in, in, in summary, they left God and partnered with instability. They are now in Babylon a land that is not their home. Their disobedience caused this, but the good news is, while they were there, God still encouraged them with his ultimate plan for their life, which involved them being restored. I stopped by to encourage you today. It doesn't matter if you're new, if you've been gone. 
if you've been up or down, caught in sin or in loving fellowship with God, when you're in a questionable season or questionable place, or you just don't know what to do next, you can trust God's plan for you because his ultimate plan involves you coming back to him. That's great news. It's, that's worthy of celebration. So uh, my sermon in the statement, if you don't remember anything else, this is the big idea. Remember this, when you find yourself in questionable seasons, God's plan is best because it leads us to him. God's plan is best because it leads us to him. In the opening verses, in verses 4 through 7 of this text, we see false prophets giving false prophecies. Uh, they are telling God's people a word that's contrary to God, to what God has said. So God uses Jeremiah to proclaim the unwanted truth during a time of darkness and disaster and to offer hope to a faithful remnant. It's the unwanted truth because when you're in a difficult season of your life, you don't want to hear bad news because it brings more questions and it doesn't lift you. But looking at the scripture in this proper context reveals that it is a promise of delayed relief to those in deep suffering. In other words, God's going to bring them out, but only when he's ready. Uh, it's, it's not a promise that we will never encounter suffering. It is not a promise for prosperity and wealth. It is not a promise to God's people at that time that God would eventually place them uh, 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 back where they belong. He tells them to get comfortable and don't believe the hype that the false prophet is sharing. The false prophecy said two years, but God said 70. Uh, they will be there for 70 years, and the Lord has instructed them to build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat. He tells them to multiply, find wives, have sons and daughters. In other words, produce where you've been planted because you're going to be here for a little while. He, he, he tells them not to be deceived by false prophecies and to pursue the well-being of the city because ultimately, when the city thrives, so will you. Stick to the plan. I, I, I know this word doesn't sound good to the flesh. It, 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 it makes you wonder. You telling me that God wants me to be well in a place that's foreign to me. You're telling me that God wants me to do well in a place that's supposed to be punishment. He wants me to produce in a place where I should feel pain and pray for a place that's my prison. And he wants me to ignore the only good news about freedom that I've heard in a while. You, you got to be kidding me. But the answer is yes. What, what, what we are witnessing in this text is God giving grace in the midst of consequence. Uh, yes, grace. In the midst of consequence, you've, you've done wrong, but you belong to me. My plan still stands in questionable seasons. Although they are facing the consequences of their actions, God is still gracious, and he has an ultimate plan to restore them. They're in exile because of their disobedience, yet God is still encouraging them to live. He is the only one that can do this because he has a plan. Listen, what do you do when God sends you to a place as consequence, but he tells you to live? You're, 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 you're going through trouble, but God still says you got to live. You have to wake up every day. You still got to brush your teeth. You still have to wash your face. You still have to bathe. You still have to encourage yourself. You still have to encourage other people. What do you do when you're in trouble and God says, live? And, and it is with this same sentiment that I stand to encourage you in this season of our lives to live in spite of what you may feel. Trust in spite of what you see. Follow God's plan in questionable seasons and to share with you today that it doesn't matter what you have done or what your problems may be. Yes, God has the ability to bless you in the midst of your consequences. To bless you even though there have been problems. He wants to care for you during, during critical times and love you when you feel little and limited. You may be suffering punishment or dealing with the consequences of your actions, but there is grace in the midst of your consequences. 
God still has a plan for you. He has a plan for this church. He has a plan for your life. He will take care of you because this current life you live is about you returning to him. And for this reason, you can celebrate and give him praise. God has a plan. And you can trust it in questionable seasons. Listen, I'm almost done, but the Baptist preacher in me says, I got to give you three points. Three, three points. Three, three, three brief reasons why you can trust God's plan in questionable seasons. Number one is because, simply put, he knows. He knows. We see God's declaration in verse 11. God says, I know the plans I have for you. I get excited because in the original language, this is often translated, watch this, as I alone knows. Don't miss that. I alone knows. Listen, God didn't consult humanity, nor did he ask for permission while orchestrating this plan. God is the only one who knows the exact plan that he has for humanity. He has the blueprint and knows what's current and what's coming. He tells his people that he alone knows the plan because there were false prophets sharing the wrong information. Crazy stuff happens when your ear is connected to a lie. False hopes are planted. False joy, fake news, division, etc. The false prophet Hananiah shared that they would be freed in two years. This plan wasn't sent by God. And God had to set them straight. God alone knew the plan. He said that he had a plan for their well-being and not disaster. His plan was to give them health and good fortunes. But they couldn't see this because of the darkness they were experiencing. When all a person can see is disaster and misfortune, they'll listen to anyone. But God says, I alone know the plans I have for you. His plan was not intended to hurt them, but to give them a future and a hope. In other words, God was telling them that tomorrow is taken care of, even though they hadn't made it there yet. Don't miss this. Their tomorrow is well, even though they, hadn't ma- they had not made it there yet. Their future involved them coming back to him with a repentant heart and living the life that he's called them to live. A future and a hope. I get it. It was hard for those in bondage to see a bright future and to have hope because of their season. I get it. When all you see is misfortune, it's hard to conceive how deliverance would come. But can I encourage you what happened to them and what has happened to you was not and is not a series of unplanned accidental events. God is sovereign and in control. He has intimate knowledge and all authority over all the circumstances surrounding your life and knows the situation you're in, I in, but have hope because this is not your end, E-N-D. For God has an expected end for your life. He knows the plan he has for you, and if you stay in his will, your future is bright. No one can stop what God has in store for you. There is no need to wonder, no worry, if God is coming through on your behalf. Let me help you out by saying have hope because he knows. In your darkest hour and your lowest moment, hold your head up high. Give God praise for having the intimate knowledge about you and your life. God is intentional and will deliver you from the hands of the enemy and from the mess you've created. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. And check this out. Check this out. Knowing God's plan, knowing God has a plan for you, watch this, frees you from interfering with somebody else's plan. You don't have to hate. You don't have to be envious. You don't have to be upset. You don't, you have your own future, your own hope. God knows and he has a plan designed specifically for you. If he sent you to it, he's going to bring you through it. Woo, I wish I had some help up in here that would thank God for knowing all their business. He knew when you were going through, he knows what you're dealing with and your response towards the knowledge of God ought to be thankfulness because if he knows, then you know everything will work out. Uh, that, That marriage, God knows about it. That friend, God knows about it. This church, God knows about it. That pain, God knows about it. The seasons of joy and sadness, God alone knows. Get over here, Job. Y'all, y'all know Job, don't you? Uh, uh, he was, he was, he was well settled. 
but endured hardships beyond his control because God said so. His friends turned on him. His family turned on him. He went through a season of discouragement, but this is what Job said. Job said, Job said, though they slay me, yet will I trust him. After Job prayed for his friends, when God saw fit, the Lord restored his fortune and gave him what the old preacher said, double for his trouble. I'm convinced you can do anything and everything. Nothing and no one can upset your plans. That's what, that's what Job said. I'm not here to tell you God will make you rich in possessions, but he's rich in mercy. I, can promise, I can't promise you a big house, but I can deal you some hope. All I'm trying to tell you is God alone knows and his plans are undefeated. His plans are undefeated. Hold your head high. Keep hope because God alone knows he's, his will is perfect. Things will come full circle during when he says it's time. But you got to stay with the one that has the intimate knowledge of your situation. Not only does God know, but God is accessible. If you look closely at verses 12 and 13, the good news is not only did God have intimate knowledge of the plan, but it's even better that he allowed them to play a part in it. He grants access to him. So he could include them in the plan. Please realize that God is God. And he doesn't have to tell us anything. But because of his grace and his desire to fellowship with us, he includes us. Here's how they were encouraged to play a part. Jeremiah gives five verbs. Say five. Five verbs that give us insight on how they were to be a part of the plan. He says, come. Well, actually, he says, call first. He says, call, come, pray, seek, and find. Let me say that again, just in case you missed it. He says, call, come, pray, seek, and find. Now, we know what verbs are, don't we? Verbs are action words. You got to take some action. You have to do something. The first word is call. This call is a call from the gut. You get God's attention by calling his name. Call him from a place of dependency, a place of humility. Your cry gets God's attention. Maybe, just maybe he hadn't answered yet because your cry is artificial. The place from which you're crying from determines if you get God's attention or not. A sincere place, a place of humility. Then he says, the, the second word is come. You come to him, meaning approach his throne of grace and humility, not with any ill intentions, but because you love him and you want him. The third word is pray. You pray to him, meaning neglect the other idols that have your attention, that you've been connected to, and communicate with God while remaining hopeful for your expected outcome. Pray to him first, not after you shared with the world. The fourth word, seek. It's the discovery of God by any means necessary. You seek him, you search for the one true God, specifically in your worship, the study of God's word, and prayer. And when you do this, you will find him. That's the fifth word. Meaning that you will discover him and his holiness and what he has intended for you and your life will never be the same. God is accessible. If we seek him with our whole heart, we will find him when we want him more than anything else. The people's heart was torn. They heard the word of God, but the pagan culture drew their hearts away from God. Like many of us, many hearts are torn because we can't decide on if we want Christ or we want to deal with the culture. We, we have to remember that God's ultimate plan was to draw their hearts and ours back to him. 
He's using the exile to accomplish this. Just maybe he's using that terrible thing in your life to draw you back to him and to remind you that he's accessible. It's amazing what an exile or trouble will make your heart do. In the midst of bondage, in the midst of their questionable place, they were reminded about God's accessibility and encouraged to call on him and not the idols. The same way Jeremiah encouraged God's people in the text is the same encouragement I have for you. When you find yourself in questionable seasons, remember that you can get to God. God is accessible. Turn to Christ and not anything else. You are not in your dark place alone. Whatever you found yourself in, God is accessible. Or wherever you found yourself in life, God is accessible. Turn from what has you bound and let God in. It's your responsibility to play your role in his plan. Call him. His name is Jesus. Come to him. He'll welcome you. Pray to him. He'll listen. Seek him and you'll find him. He's accessible. One writer said, I called on your name, O Lord, out of the lowest pit. Psalm 15, 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you and you will honor me. Another verse says, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. Do I have a witness in the house that when you called on Jesus, he heard you. When you came to him, he helped you. When you prayed, he heard. And when you sought after him, sincerely, you found him. God is a very present help in your time of trouble. Why? Because he's accessible even in questionable seasons. Questionable seasons, you can still get to God. But you have to play your part in the plan. We can trust God's plan in questionable seasons because God knows, number one. Number two, God is accessible. But third and finally, we can trust God's plan in questionable seasons because he promises to restore. He promises to restore. The Lord concludes his words of comfort with a promise that only he can keep because he's the one with the plan. It's, it's a promise that they will find him, and he declares for at least the third time that he will restore them. This promise for restoration, watch this, is not based on their ability to find him, but on God's willingness to be found. Say that again. This restoration is not based on their ability to find him, but on God's willingness to be found. In other words, God is open for discovery. He wants to be found in order to restore them. Remember, I said earlier, he's accessible. It's, it's a repentant heart in search of the one who promises to provide the restoration. He says he will gather them from all the nations in places where he banished them. It's, it's a picture of God working his plan by placing them in their rightful place because according to his plan, their time will be up and their hearts would have changed. He's going to bring back their previous rights and reinstate them to their former, former condition and position. This is an assignment that only God can complete because he's the one who started it all. You, you may say, what does this have to do with me? He's talking to them. Well, God has a plan to restore you too. But his plan for us is through Jesus. The same principles apply. It's not based on your work or ability to find Jesus, but upon Jesus' willingness to be found. As you seek him, it's called, it starts with a G, it's called grace. By grace through faith in Christ alone, our salvation and restoration can begin with a repentant heart and a willingness to submit to Jesus and live for him.
If you call Jesus, come to Jesus and pray to him, he will receive you and listen to you. If you seek him, you will find him because he wants to be found. He's not playing hide and seek. He will restore you if you give yourself to him. God will not sanctify what's not in his hand. The New Testament puts it like this. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. For everyone who, who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. God, I thank you for opening the door through your son, Jesus Christ. God's ultimate plan is to bring you back to him. Nothing you've done can ever eliminate the love he has for you. Another verse puts it like this. For I am persuaded, neither death nor life, not angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, you've fallen short many times, but there is grace in your questionable season. You've done wrong, but God still has a plan to restore. You may be in some form of trouble, but you are not alone because God is a very present help in your time of trouble. He has a plan to restore you, a plan for hope and good fortune. Aren't you glad he got a plan for your life? I'm so glad he has a plan for me. People will write you off, but God has a plan. Your plan will fail, but his plan won't. His plan is to bring you back to him. And this is accomplished through the blood of his son, Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. Since we're talking about Jesus, I might as well tell you about his questionable season. He was arrested and falsely accused, but he stuck to the plan. They beat him bloody, but he stuck to the plan. Took him up a hill called Calvary, but he stuck to the plan. They hung him high and stressed him why. He even asked the question, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But he stuck to the plan. He died, but that was part of the plan. He rose with power. That was part of the plan. And now you and I have access to the Father by faith. That was part of the plan. Jesus, I thank you for trusting the Father in your questionable seasons. Thank you for sticking to the plan. Greater life, I stopped by to tell you, you can trust God's plan in questionable seasons. Stick to the plan because God knows. Stick to the plan because God is accessible. Stick to the plan because he will restore you. Let me remind you this. Let me remind you this and I'm done. Let me remind you this. The Lord's plan for you are for your ultimate welfare, not disaster. You have a future beyond your troubles. Your faith requires you to trust God beyond what you see. If what you see can easily knock you off your block, maybe your faith ain't deep enough. Use your experiences to get closer to God. Yeah, you might be broke. Your, your, your marriage might be in trouble. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You sick, you don't feel good. I don't know what your trouble is. But 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 you have you have to use that as leverage to draw yourself closer to God. God ain't going to hunt you down, he ain't going to chase you. All he's going to tell you is, "Hey, I'm here. I I've, I've, I've been here the whole time waiting on you to come back to me." God's plan for you. It's through Jesus. He doesn't have a plan B. He doesn't have a plan B. Jesus is the only remedy for humanity's sin problem. Accept him. Say yes to him and watch him work his plan through you for your life, but for his glory. It's not about us. I want to challenge you to trust God's plan in questionable seasons. Amen.
Come on, church. Come on. Keep giving God some praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep giving God some praise. Everyone stand. Everyone stand if you're able. Everyone stand. Even if you're at home, come on and stand up. Come on. This requires immediate reflection. This requires immediate self-examination. This word ain't to be played with. Heads about, eyes are closed all over the sanctuary. Father, we pause now because we saw ourselves in this text. Father Pastor Pierce put it plainly. The mess that many of us are in is self-inflicted. So, Father, now we pause and we ask for your guidance in these questionable seasons that we find ourselves in. Father, we know that there is no one exempt from this message. So, Father, in faith, we stand in solidarity. We stand as one. And, Father, we declare and celebrate the fact that you know. Father, you know what we're going through. You know where you're trying to take us. And you know what it's going to take to get us there. You know, Lord God. But secondly, Father, we're grateful that you are accessible. Father, someone here is wrestling with feeling alone. Even feeling lonely. And so, Father, I ask in faith that you would help them to see that you are a very present help in time of trouble. Lord, you're there. You haven't gone anywhere. You're waiting on us. Father, we're the ones who have drifted. Permit us to come back to you. We're the ones who have strayed out of your will. Father, permit us to come back to you. We're the one who stepped outside of what you have ordained. Father, help us to come back to you. And then, Father, help us to be confident that you're going to restore, that you're going to revive us, that you're going to renew us. Father, I love how Pastor Pierce painted the picture of the people of Israel and, and what they were going through. And Father, many of us can see ourselves in that passage. We're struggling in our singleness. We're struggling in our marriage. We're struggling on our jobs. And Father, it just seems... So overwhelming. Thank you for the reminder. Above all, that you've got us. Thank you for the affirmation that you've got a plan for every single one of us. So, Father, we receive it. We, we rejoice in it. And, Father, we're going to rush to put it into practice. We love you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, let everyone say amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Come on, come on, come on. Give God a hand of praise for the preacher of the hour. Come on, come on. Woo! Bless his name. Now, some of you may be thinking, Pastor Brown, I need a little extra prayer today. I'm just, I'm, I'm going through, and I need someone to, to call on the Lord on my behalf. If you want us to pray, let me get some of our leaders to come down. Come on down, leaders. Come on down. Come on down. If you need someone to just pray for you and, and to ask the Lord to minister to you, they'll be down front. Uh, some of you are here, and you're like, Pastor Brown, I, I need more than that. I, I need Jesus. I want to receive the Lord Jesus as my Savior. Pastor Pierce said he's the only way, and I want, to, I want to discover that way. I want you to prepare to come as well. Or you may say, Pastor Brown, I've been here several times, and, and I, I'm, I'm a follower of Christ, but, but I need a church home. I see several are coming. I need, I need my counselors to get ready. Get ready, counselors. But whatever, whatever your reason, we're here. We're here. We're waiting on you. My brother's going to sing a verse, and I just want you to come for prayer to receive Christ or to become partners with us in ministry. Come on, come on. Come on, let us sing. Come on, let us sing. One 
a friend we have in Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Pray right where you are. Pray right where you are. Come on. Our sins and grieve to bear. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a privilege to carry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything to God and Prayer. Oh, sing, man, sing. what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. And it's all. Come on, saints. Come on, saints. Come on, come on, come on. What a privilege to have. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what we are you may be seen for our fair oh, what needless pain we bear it's all because we do not care Father, we thank you so much for, again, the word that we all needed today. And Father, we're most grateful for not only the message, but for the messenger. And Father, we pray blessings over Reverend Harold Pierce, Jr. Thank you, Lord God, for using him in a magnificent way. And Father, help us to re-examine this passage in the days and weeks to come. For us to be reminded of your expectations for us. Lord, we love you. And we pray for those who have come both for prayer and for decisions. And we pray that, that each would find comfort in your name. That name of Jesus. The name in which we pray. Let everyone say amen. Come on, one more hand of praise. Thank you, leaders. Thank you so much. I think we got another wow. Did somebody say wow? Wow. Did that black man not preach up in here? What a word, my brother. Praise God. It's most encouraging, y'all, to, uh, to just have a, a, a team like we have a greater life. Every Sunday the Lord has blessed. Last week was Pastor Davila. Week before that was Pastor Sonja. Week before that was Bishop Brown. Week before that, it's just been just week after week of, of good preaching. Even during the week, uh, Minister Jeremy and Minister Isaac have been bringing the word midweek. Give God a hand for all of the, the folks who share the burden and blessing of carrying God's word. And then I was walking down the hall this morning, and I heard the SOL preachers preaching in SOL, and it was 
preachments going on in SOL. So we just got preaching all over the place. Today is the first Sunday, and we celebrate joyfully the Holy Communion uh, as we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, I wish that if you have not received the elements, you would lift your hand now. And I actually need one on the, on the pulpit. And uh, I'm going to read a passage of Scripture, and it's a moment of, of self-reflection. Y'all, let me tell you what's so important. We have to always keep in mind what the Lord is doing in our lives. Um, I have been so, my intimacy with the Lord has been so increased in this season. God bless you, bro. In this season, it has um, the heaviness of it all. And I know that the Lord is with me, and it has drawn me nearer to him. My prayer time has, I'm just, I'm praying constantly. And that's what pain will do to you. Pain will push you to your knees like you ain't never seen before. And that's why these moments that we share together are so important that we would sincerely reevaluate ourselves, that we would sincerely come clean with the Lord, that we would see ourselves as he sees us, and that we would take these holy moments seriously. I'm just tearing to make sure everyone who wants to share has an opportunity to receive the elements. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we find these words from the Apostle Paul. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, we thank you for the privilege of remembering Jesus. And we thank you for the privilege of remembering him the way that he asked to be remembered. Father, now I pray in faith that you would forgive us of our sins, that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Father, that you would help us to see ourselves as you see us. Father, purge us, prepare us. This is our prayer of consecration. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. It was on the same night that Jesus was betrayed by one of the very men that supped with him. When he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, take, eat. This is my body. Let us eat. In the same way after supper, he took the fruit of the vine and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it. Can I get a hallelujah in the house? Hallelujah. Give God a finger snap of praise. Come on, finger snap of praise. I know your hands are full. Pastor Pierce, you done preached us crazy. I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. Yo, we got snow cones. Uh, the meteorologist said it's going to be 125 degrees today. So get you some snow cones. I'm sorry, 115. My bad. Get you some snow cones. Let me go over a few things before we leave. Praise God. With all that wonderful word, that convicting word, let me, let me pastor just a little while. If you're visiting with us, uh, perhaps for the first time, please just take your cell phone out, aim the camera at the QR code. We would love to find out who you are, a little bit about you. We won't stalk you. We'll just follow up with you. But we can follow up with you if we don't know you, please. Also, it's time for us to give. It's time for us to give. Now, church, let, let's talk. About, let's be still for just a minute. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, come on. Let me tell y'all something about giving. Come on. Now, Pastor, I've gone to Haiti. I just got back from New York. Um, had a good time. Had a good time in New York. Oh, Lord. You've seen the pictures. But I ensure that my offering was in place. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to us. Look at your neighbor he's talking to us. Look at the other neighbor, he's talking to us. Amen. Now listen, our church has gotten smaller, watch this, but we've gotten stronger. We've gotten a lot stronger. 
uh, our offering has, amen, give God some praise right there. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Y'all, we, 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 we've had some families to transition, praise God. We know they're going to find what they're looking for, but here is the point I'm making. We've not had a dip in offering, which is a wonderful thing. But during the summer, there is always a challenge. Now, we have five months remaining in this calendar year, and after uh, this next Sunday, perhaps the third Sunday, uh, uh, I will begin reiterating some vision items. Now, it's not just about buildings and, and maintenance. It's also about ministry. Y'all, we have resumed our farm stand on Fridays. Y'all, give God some praise that y'all don't know. Y'all don't No, You do know. You do know how significant that ministry is. And it's these types of ministry initiatives that we are going to do. We got five. Somebody say five. Come on, say five. In this final five months, we're going to we're going to be moving at a very hectic pace. We're gonna we're gonna fulfill everything we said that we would do for 2023 and then some. Now again, some of that is building stuff. Some of that is parking lot stuff. Some of that is is painting of the facility. But a lot of that is is regenerating some ministries. And we've already met, we've had one-on-ones with all the groups with singles, married, and all that. Y'all, we have to finish well. And I'll be the first to tell you, we've had some setbacks. But that's okay. We're going to get it done. And what I've told you many, many times, it takes resources to do ministry. Now, I'm not talking to any guests. If you're a visitor, this talk ain't for you. This is for the members. Y'all, before the summer ends, give God a special gift. Give him a special gift for your church here at the Greater Life Church. I'm talking to those of you online. Praise God for your online presence. I don't fuss anymore. You ain't got to come in the sanctuary. I see you online. But if you're online, your giving needs to be as consistent as if you were here. Give God some praise right there. Come on, y'all. Come on. Don't get, don't get lacked on that because we're talking about giving. Don't get lax on that. It is so crucial and it is so important and it is so biblical. Your giving must be consistent and liberal. So if you have been kind of missing because you picked up the new Jordans or whatever, let's make up the difference before the summer ends and make sure that we're giving at the level that the Lord would have us to give. Whenever we have guest preachers, all those things are extra. And I got to get a break. You understand that. So we have to make sure that we're serving and supporting those who bring the word. So the farm stand is back. Praise God. 10 to 12 on Fridays. Uh, good stuff. Good. We ain't giving y'all no raggedy stuff. Uh, some good stuff. So come and embrace and serve and support. I, you know, I, I want about 25 of y'all to be here this Friday. 25. Just set it on your calendar. Uh, uh, set it around your lunch or whatever. Come here. Grab you some produce. It's going to be good stuff. And, and you're gonna, your family's going to appreciate the fruits and the veggies and less process. Somebody say less process. Less fried. Say less fried. Oh, that was real soft. I mean, some of y'all almost say less. You couldn't even say it. Come on, saints. Come on. We got to do better. We got to do better. Snow cone truck outside. Don't forget the snow cone truck. All right. Uh, uh, start bringing uh, school supplies. School supplies. We're doing a school fair with um, school share fair for students K through 16 years old. Uh, we need. This is for the fashion chair. We need undergarments, socks, and toiletries. Undergarments, socks, and toiletries. Getting ready for the fashion share, back to school share. So please take full advantage of that. Get those out. There'll be some receptacles here. Y'all, of course, when I say undergarments and socks, that means new stuff. Okay? Okay. Just want to be clear. It's important. Just clear. Clarity. New items. Still in the package. Okay? All right. <clears throat> and toiletries. Let's take full advantage of that. Uh, if you're interested in serving with our greater kids, they have upcoming fall training kickoff. Uh, great things in store. You can email Pastor Sonja. I'll make sure that that is in the email blast for the week. Next Sunday, we have a standalone sermon, uh, Dancing in the Rain, from James chapter 1. It is what the Lord has, has been pouring into me, and I want to pour into you as how we endure and enjoy the seasons that we're in. Uh, also receive word. Hope it's okay to share these publicly. Sister Pat Johnson, I believe, is in the hospital. I just received word. Uh, Sister Helen is not feeling well on today. 
And we're also lifting up Robert Ward continually for his treatment, as well as those who are going through Sister Audrey Simpson. How's mom? Sister Audrey, how's mom? How's mom? She's stable. Praise God. We rejoice in that. All right. So we have several on our prayer list. Uh, that we are, that we circulate. So continue to pray for the, those who are just kind of going through seasons of sickness, illness, and challenge. With that being said, let's all stand. Let's all stand. I hope I hadn't forgotten anything. Y'all, we're back. We're, 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 we'll be back. Listen carefully. We'll be back after this week. Okay? No Wednesday prayer call, no nothing this week. We'll be back after this week. I appreciate the, y'all have been calling in. I see you calling in. But after, look at the name and say, after this week. So let Pastor Brown will be back in the pulpit on Sunday. That activates all of our, uh, that takes us off of a reset. So we'll see you after this week. Uh, Pastor Pierce and this family are going to exit out, and they're going to greet you all in the foyer. Don't he look good in this nice suit? I see you. I'm going to say something about your suit. Uh-huh, look good in your little suit. Amen. Got his suit on. Thank him for his little suit. Amen. Cute little suit. Y'all, I miss y'all so much. So good to be back. Give God a hand for our musicians, singers, AV camera personalities. Y'all, they handling up deacons, all that good stuff. Ushers, people who greet us as it comes. The ladies who make the coffee. That coffee be good. I, I still do my Starbucks, but we praise God for the coffee. All right. I've tried to help. I've tried to hold y'all a little longer. Uh, if I hadn't seen you in a little bit, I would love to shake your hand as well. Uh, but go shake Pastor Pierce's hand. And don't forget, we got snow cones. Get some snow cones. Temperature is down to 120. All right. Um, before I pray, have y'all seen my cowboys? Y'all Hayden. God bless you. God bless you. For all you haters, I just want you to know this is our year. And I, y'all, I'm smiling. Listen, I'm smiling through my tears. Y'all know Pastor Rodney Frazier and I, we would hit every opening game, every home opener. We would hit that opener. We won't hit it this year. He's in heaven, but I'm going to be there somehow. And the Cowboys going to do it this season. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. I just spoke that into the atmosphere. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for the reminder on today. Father, we thank you for Pastor Harold Pierce, Jr. What a blessing he is to our local body. Father, thank you for pouring into him that we can trust your plan, especially in questionable seasons. Father, we love you. As we leave this place, may we never leave your presence. We love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray that everyone say amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Have a good one.